G'day, g'day everyone, welcome, welcome to another edition of Gov's Hero Review Videos. Today we are checking out another of the Neon City Heroes. Specifically, this is the review video for the 5 star legendary yellow hero, Dragon Fist, the Dragon Gang Leader. Dragon Fist is available, as we saw very briefly there, from for summons from the Neon City portal, or the Season 2 portal, which comes around once every four weeks. It's roughly a monthly event, um, is whereabouts it sits in the calendar. Dragon Fist himself was added to the portal a fair whack of time ago now. Uh, he was added in, in February 2022. He was actually the fourth drip feed hero into the portal, um, which is a strategy SGG do where they put a new hero into existing portals just to keep you coming back. Um, so season two, they just basically every appearance added a new hero month on month on month on month. Um, and that happened for many, many iterations. Um, so Dragon Fist, yeah, the number four option that came, or the fourth option that was dropped into the portal. The portal odds themselves, we can see that the odds are sitting there at a 0.6% chance for an unfeatured Season 2 Legendary Hero, or a 1% chance for one of the two featured Legendary Heroes. Now, to put this into a bit of perspective, if you were to come in here and do 100 summons in the Season 2 portal, you would have, across those 100 summons, an 80% probability that you'd gain any event hero. Doesn't matter which one, an 80% probability that you'd gain an event 5-star hero. If you're going for a specific, sorry, for a featured hero, it is a 63.4% probability that you'd gain any uh, featured hero, and a 45.3% probability that you'd gain any of the unfeatured heroes. If you drill down onto the specific level, uh, there is just a 39.4% probability across those 100 summons of getting a specific featured hero, so there's two options there. And of the 25 unfeatured heroes, if you were to go for a specific one there, it is just a 2.4% probability that you would get that specific unfeatured hero. So not great odds, um, and they will drop off if more heroes do in the future get added to this portal. I don't know if they will, but if they do, those odds will drop off a bit further. All right, I'll put you on pause and we can go and check out Dragon Fist's artwork real quick. All right, so here you can see Dragon Fist's artwork. So he's one of the heroes that does feature in the season two story uh, in uh, amongst all of the cutscenes. So that is why he's got that little bit of uh, an animation going with his arms and his uh, belt loops, so to speak, or his shoulder straps, I guess they are. Um, so that sort of explains the, the animation. So any heroes that appear um, in the... Um, uh, the the cutscenes uh, they will pop up as getting uh, this little animation. Um, Dragon Fist himself, his Kaido, he's obviously got Dragon Fists or Pyrogenic Fists as they are in his skill. Uh, so they're glowing that red hot. He's the Dragon Gang Leader, so obviously he's got some of that Dragon Paraphernalia going on with the dragons coming up and around his arms. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's kind of his artwork. So feel free to pause it if you wish. But it's kind of got the um, what's that? It's like the, I don't know, there, there was this Marvel Fist um, hero, and I've forgotten what his name was, but it's kind of like that. Um, Iron Fist, I want to think his name was. Anyway, off topic. Um, so that's Dragon Fist artwork. Feel free to pause it if you wish, but otherwise, I'm going to jump back across and we'll take a look at the rest of his card. So... Dragon Fist is a member of the Vigilante family, which means that he is gaining a plus 15, 20, 25, or 30 percent chance to give a dodge buff, plus 16 percent dodge buff, to all allies for three turns. Um, so that chance happens whenever he casts his special skill. Um, you've got that percentage chance to create the dodge buff for having uh, two, three, four, or five unique members of the Vigilante family in a battle. You also have a plus three, six, nine, or 12% attack bonus for having that same number of unique family members. Notably, you do have to have unique heroes, uh, so it can't be two copies of Dragon Fist in the fight. It's gotta be combining in with two other, or other members of the Vigilante family, like combining Dragon Fist with wheels or Dragon Fist with vision, if you wanted to go yellow on uh, a double yellow stack. On the personal side of things, we can see that Dragon Fist comes in with 701 attack, 779 defense, and 1,428 HP. So um, the big obvious skew is obviously that uh, defense stat, it is quite high compared to the other two stats. Um, we do have a little bit of a drop in the HP and the attack, so they've both fed into that quite elevated defense stat. His power as well is worth pointing out, it's 716. It is 
quite low compared to some of the the newer heroes that have been added to the portal. So you've got some of the most recent heroes, the portal troopers. Um, Topaz comes in with 742. Uh, even the current hero of the month, uh, Frostbite, he has 735. So he's a little bit reduced compared to some of those newer heroes. All it means though, is that he's got less total stats to distribute, right? Um, all power is is a representation of those base stats. So more power means more stats to split amongst the, the three um, disciplines, so to speak, which is ultimately basically what the power creep is on a lot of these heroes. His charge speed is set to 56, which is average speed and will require 10 tiles to charge or five ghosted tiles. The speed break happens upon reaching speed 58, so that's just a plus two speed improvement, which is possible even just using the 2% charge generation node from his class tree. Um, you find it at plus 19. Alternatively, yellow is blessed with a number of options of speed guns. So you've got um, the Ragnarok Vantage, which is a five-star gun giving plus six. You've got the Tris Vector, which is a four-star gun giving plus seven. Hell, there's even a three-star yellow gun, which gives you a plus three speed improvement. So yellow has a lot of speed options. Any and all of them will break uh, Dragon Fist down that first step. The double speed break would require you reaching speed 65, which is plus nine speed improvement. Unfortunately, we don't have a plus nine yellow speed gun. So there's not actually any way of double breaking Dragon Fist. Even if you were to combine the 2% charge generation node with the plus seven Triss Vector, it does actually still fall slightly sharp, short. If you had a 4% charge node, it would break him. But with just the 2%, we fall a little bit short, unfortunately. Um, so yeah. Class node, potentially relevant, um, I want to say. It can get you the first break if you wanted to use a different gun on him or use your speed gun elsewhere. Um, alternatively, if you look at the charge tournaments, um, the speed is up at 65, so a plus 6 Ragnarok Vantage isn't actually enough to break him on its own because you need plus 7. So in that case, the 2% is useful. So I don't know, potentially relevant to you maybe? Uh, I don't know. Um, I certainly picked it up on both of my copies of Dragon Fist. Um, so yeah, um, class wise, he is a member of the demolitions class, uh, which means that he is granted the chance to shell shock the enemy, which will remove their buffs, um, from play as well as then creating a bonus damage of, sorry, I've lost my spot. 15% additional damage per each buff that is removed with a flat increase of 50% damage to normal damage. So Personally, I love the Demolitions perk. It's effectively a free opportunity at getting bonus damage and a free opportunity at dispelling buffs from the enemy heroes without needing to charge any special skills. So typically, I will give plus one to all of my Demolitions class heroes once they get maxed. Dragon Fist, I pushed a long way up the tree because he is a very, very high quality hero. So um, by way of an emblem path, you can make an argument to go either way, right? Um, you could go either the attack path to increase his damage output, um, which is what I ultimately did, or you can go the defense and HP route, which is going to increase his survival. Um, it's a little bit of a one or the other. There's not really a right or a wrong answer. Um, you can go in either path. Um, so it ultimately just comes down to what you personally feel like uh, emphasizing. So this here, this is an attack path on Dragon Fist. So you can see that I have picked up all of the attack nodes the whole way down the tree. Um, attack on the demolitions class is not one where you have to choose between the sides. You literally just follow the side that has got attack nodes on it and you will end up following the quote unquote attack path. So this is the path that you'd follow if you want to enhance Dragon Fist damage output, um, if you're happy with his level of survival. If you feel that he needs some additional survival, then you would need to be going a um, defense HP route. So I don't actually have one of those Dragon Fists, so I'm going to have to show you on Ember here. So what the defense and HP route looks like, it's literally the opposite to what that attack route was. So we are going to follow the path down and pick up each of the nodes that features both defense and HP on it and finishing there at plus 19. Now, Plus 20 on the Demolitions Talent is an attack bonus, but it is a low return on investment for the amount of attack points that you get compared to the number of emblems you have to outlay. So I personally don't recommend going to plus 20. It doesn't really get you much of a benefit back, um, not for the amount of emblems that you're outlaying. So yeah, 
Plus 19 is as far as I'd go. This is the defense path. This will get you more survival. Um, very, very good argument to make. I went with damage because that's just my personal preference. Um, but if you're wanting, you know, the non-biased view, defense and HP path is probably the better argument as a charge control hero. Anyway, enough of that nonsense. Uh, let's go and check out the rest of his skill. So his skill is titled Pyrogenic Punch and at level 10 skill and 56 charge speed, it will deal 270% damage to the target and nearby enemies. It will then uh, reduce the charge of the target and nearby enemies by 20%, deal an additional 40% damage against purple enemies and will burn the target and nearby enemies for 309 HP over three turns so couple things going on in there the ordering of the skill is also a little bit weird i personally would have put the additional damage right underneath the damage line but sgg didn't because why not confuse everyone um but anyway let's uh let's start with that damage output um and then go on from there so damage as always it is quite easy to calculate there's a lot of variability in it though so for simplicity's sake i compare heroes based on their um, their attack power. Now, attack power is just a hero's attack stat, which is, uh, in the case of Dragon Fist, 701. And then we then norm, sorry, multiply it by the percentage of this new special skill, 270%. Uh, this then comes out, as you can see, with an attack power of 1,893. Uh, normalizing that with speed, we get 189 attack power per tile, which ranks Dragon Fist there at number four of the 10 yellow AoE 3 damage dealers in the game. So not a bad damage dealer from yellow. Um, he does obviously pick up some bonus damage against purple enemies, and he's also got the burn ailment as well. So both of those will feed into his overall net damage output, I guess. Um, but as just his base damage, he comes in there at number four of the yellow options. If we were to look at all of the elements, uh, he's 24 of the 61 options. So, you know, kind of that round about the third range, um, which is what we see as a yellow dealer, uh, damage dealer as well. So about that top third is kind of where he sits um, in the scheme of things. So yeah, as I said, quite good. And then you then factor in the fact that he's going to get additional damage from the burn and the, um, the purple enemies. So we haven't even talked about those yet, which we shall do now. So I'm going to skip down and I'm actually going to look at this bonus damage against purple next because I think it makes most sense to do it right after looking at his damage output anyway. So this is the, the bonus damage. So it deals extra damage against purple. Extra damage equals 40% of damage dealt. Now, why they didn't just say that deals an extra 40% damage against purple enemies, I don't know. Why they had to put in this little tool tip to, as additional info like it's some little secret, I don't know. It doesn't make much sense to me, but it is like this. Um, so it creates a little bit of confusion because what we normally see with these conditional bonus damages is it feeds additively into the damage calculation. So um, as an example, if a hero deals 300% damage with a bonus 100% damage to armored enemies, what it does is it feeds 400% into the damage calculation and then runs it through. So it goes 400% times by attack stat divided by defense stat, you know, raised times by RNG, raised to the power of 1.25 and then just carrying on through the calculation. So that's what would normally happen. In the case of Dragon Fist, however, it's not done additively, it is applied multiplicatively. And when it does that, it is multiplied by the final output from the damage calc, right? So if we take an example where Dragon Fist does 300 damage normally against a purple enemy, he's going to be dealing 420 damage because we take the 300 times by 1.4 and come out with 420 as the damage against an equivalent purple enemy. So to really emphasize and demonstrate how all of this works, right? Dragon Fist or my Dragon Fist has a final attack stat of 1017. So this is him as a five-star hero with plus 19 and the Ragnarok Vantage. He then goes and hits an enemy with 1050 defense stat. Running that through the damage calc, we get a rough damage output of 365 HP. That's what his normal damage would be against a regular enemy. Against a purple enemy, however, it goes from 365 damage up to 511 damage, so quite a substantial increase there. 
If it was put in additively, like we see with most of the other heroes, the damage would only be 410 HP, which is not nearly as good as the 511 that we would see um, in this example. So at the end of the day, it gets a little bit confusing, but the point is that this 40% bonus damage is substantially better than what we would normally see against like armored enemies or enemies with ailments or enemies with this or enemies with that. Um, if they are a purple enemy, they get a flat 1.4 times multiplier on their normal damage, and that's what they take. So it's a really great way of getting some bonus damage against the opposing element, just like what we see with the tile damage. So tile damage, yellow tiles deal strong damage against purple enemies. It's the same thing with Dragon Fist special skill, all right? He deals strong damage, and you actually see it pop up as strong damage on those purple enemies. And it is very notably improved. Um, moving on from that, we got the final part of his... Oh, sorry, there's two other parts of his skill, which is why we have to move on. So we've got the charge cut up next. So it reduces the charge of the target and nearby enemies by 20%. So charge control. I say it all the time. Charge control is one of the best effects that you can have on heroes in their special skills, right? Charge cut itself works by taking the charge percentage and literally removing the listed percentage, right? So if a hero started on 66% charge, they will finish on 46% charge because we take their charge amount and reduce it by 20%, right? Simple as that. There's a lot of modes of charge control in the game, right? You've got heroes that will do charge cut, like Dragon Fist. You've got charge slowing. You've got charge stopping. You've got insanity. You've got silencing. All of these are modes of charge control. They stop heroes from actuating or activating, rather, their special skills as they normally would. Um, charge cut itself, uh, there are only 15 AoE charge cutters in the game across three, four, and five star rarities. Of all of those, there are roughly half of them are AoE, damage, are AoE charge cutters, and the remaining are snipers. So, of the 15, right 10 or 5 star half of those five of them are aoe charge cuts that's it right we're talking five five star charge cutters in the game or thereabouts i think it might be a little bit of a different um split but it's a incredibly limited skill right there are not many of these heroes in the game particularly for a skill that is so 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 powerful right dragon fist his maximum charge cut is 60%, right? So that's 3 by 20% is 60%. It is on the lower end of what we see uh, as charge cutting heroes, right? So Dragon Fist is 60%. It's the same as Aiko and Zodiac. Um, there are some that are incredibly high, like we've got Lumi and Torrent. They deal 35% charge cut to three enemies or 105%. Um, the current hero of the month, Frostbite, he does 25% to all. So that's 125% um, by way of comparison. So... Yeah, not the greatest of charge cuts, but it is still quite a hefty charge cut. 20% is a full, um, like it's a, like it's, I mean, 20% um, of their charges is, is removed. I will note as well, um, as enemy heroes die, the charge cut from Dragon Fist does drop off, right? So if the tank dies, then you're not able to hit three enemies anymore you can only hit either the two on the left or the two on the right um which means that his charge cut goes from three by 20 percent down to two by 20 percent frostbite by comparison he loses one enemy but still hits the other four so it goes from five by 25 to four by 25 the only hero that doesn't actually lose their efficacy is zodiac and that's because he's a multi-hitter but as an aoe three dragon fist is actually quite impacted by that the final thing that I will note is that the charge cut can be withstood by the support class talent, but it can also be blocked by Sarge and Vasquez, who create a buff which prevents charge-related uh, effects from occurring. So no charge cut, no insanity, none of those things. So, But that's consistent across everyone. It's just something that I wanted to note there. So incredibly useful skill, very, very limited in the number of heroes that have it and have the AoE component as well. The final part of his skill that I will touch on is the burn ailment. So sorry, I'm just keeping an eye on my battery percentage. It's getting a little low. Um, so the burn ailment, um, which is where the target and nearby enemies receive 309 damage over three turns. So um, magnitude and duration of this effect is consistent with 
what I would say as being the standard DOT effect of a five-star hero. Uh, so it works out as being 103 HP loss per turn. Really, really useful because it ultimately ends up doubling his base damage output. It's a little bit less, but uh, it is quite a, a substantial improvement on his overall damage output. Um, there's not really a lot else to say. Um, the usual DOT stuff all applies, so it's an ailment, so it's got to be applying and there to do the damage. So if it's resisted, withstood, cleansed, reflected, any of those things, you obviously get no burn damage. Um, it does scale heavily with his hero level, his skill level. So if he's not at 10 out of 10, he deals much less damage. Uh, I'll just quickly show this because I've got two Dragon Fists. This one, 309 over three turns. This other one is only at six out of 10, and you can see that he's 225 over three turns. Um, the reason that I've got him at six out of 10 is because I didn't want to spend more skill books on someone that I see as being predominantly a charge cut hero. So um, anyway, just worth pointing out that it does scale with the hero skill level. And obviously as well, being a DOT, it can be enhanced by heroes like Torrent or Whipstar. It can be diminished by the zombie family bonus. It can be flipped into healing by like variant Pika or the mutant family bonus. So just things to be aware of. So overall, Dragon Fist is a really, 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 really great hero. He is one of the older heroes from season two, but he has maintained so much of his usability and versatility even two to three years after his release. The base damage in his skill, it's fairly okay, right? It's not, you know, a maze balls out of this world. But I will point out that the only yellow heroes that do more damage than him are newer than him, right? Everyone on that list before that was dealing more damage in yellow of the AoE 3s, Spite, Vulpine, Melody, they are actually all newer heroes to the game than Dragon Fist. So he's actually maintained his position and his damage dealing relatively well for his age, all right? But even in spite of that, it is improved by that bonus damage against purple enemies as well as the DOT. That really pushes his net damage output up considerably. The charge cut though, this is very much his best feature. It makes him able to be used in so many situations. You can either use him as part of a yellow stack and bolster your overall damage output and give on-color charge control, or you can do what I do so often, which is to use him as a standalone off-color hero uh, in war teams. And that just gives you a backup. If you're not getting your strong color tiles, you've still got a fallback um, in charge control on a different color, all right? He was also actually quite fearsome, I've found on defense teams. Um, mostly because that bonus damage against purple enemies is really punishing against people that would stack purple against him specifically because you bring purple enemies to combat yellow heroes, but Dragon Fist is like doing an Uno reverse on you and they're like, yo, joke's on you. I'm going to do strong damage against your purple heroes. So if you don't hit me and kill me first, I'm going to deal a lot of damage against you. So he's got a lot of uses and he's in, as I said, an incredibly versatile hero, um, able to be used in so many ways. So for Dragon Fist's grading, I'm going to give him an A grade for war and raid attacks. I see him being a very, very useful hero. Um, as I said, can be used as part of a strong stack or an off color. He can be used as a one, a two, or a three. You can use him in so many different ways. Plus, as part of the Vigilante family bonus, you are getting dodge, right? It's incredibly useful. On the War Machine side of things, sorry, that was a little tangent. Um, I'm going to give him a B grade here. He's got pretty decent damage. It is bolstered in both his skill damage and also the charge cut. So he's got some uses there um, on the War Machine front. Similarly, in eventing, he's an AoE 3, which is kind of the second best mode of damage output for eventing because um, you're still getting pretty strong damage on all of the, the boss waves and stuff. So I'm going to give him a B grade on eventing as well. On the defense side of things, I'm going to give him an A-. I I personally think that flank is his best position on a defense team. However, he can function in any position on that defense team. Uh, he can work as a wing hero. He can work as a flank. He can even work as a tank. Um, he's a, a very, very versatile defensive hero as well. But flank, I would say, would be his best spot. On our three tournaments, so we've got Bloody Battle up front. So um, Bloody Battle typically... Um, DOT heroes become more powerful because most cleansing is linked to um, healers. So I'm going to give him an A grade for bloody battle attack and an A grade for bloody battle defense. Uh, 
Buff boosters, he doesn't really create any buffs, although he is Demolitions class, so he does kind of work towards negating buff boosters. So I'm going to keep him at an A- minus for buff booster attack and an A- minus for buff booster defense. And finally, in the charge tournament, um, he does get... A speed improvement going from 56 up to 65, uh, and he also has charge control, which is, in charge tournaments, um, speed and special skills is ultimately king. So being able to control them is really amazing, so I'm going to give him an A+, plus for charge tournament attack, and an A grade for charged tournament defense. So overall, that comes out as being an A- minus for attack, and an A- minus for his overall defense grade as well. And that concludes the content for this review of Dragon Fist. As always, these are just my personal thoughts and opinions on these heroes, so I do love hearing your thoughts and feedback, so please do drop down to the comments section and leave me a note. I try to read and respond as much as possible. If you did enjoy the content of this video and found it to be good, useful, helpful, feel free to like it, subscribe to my channel and all of that. Have a poke around. There's heaps of other stuff on there which may be useful to you as well. Uh, thank you once again for tuning in and joining me. I do hope that I will see you again soon in another vid, but until then, good luck, stay safe, and happy gaming. Cheers. Bye.